All right, by a show of hands, do you wear seat belts? That's good. I'm glad to see nobody raise their hand in the other direction. There is, of course, a big conversation that's been going on for quite a few years across the country about the necessity of wearing seat belts. There's a lot of conversation about the fact that this is a government mandated situation for seat belts. A lot of people and a lot of ladies specifically have a problem with seat belts. It goes across their chest, messes up their outfits. They don't particularly like seat belts. The other argument is what? The government's going to tell me again what to do? Not this time. Uh uh. I have the ability to make up my own mind. If I want to drive without a seat belt, I'm going to do it. Very similar to the helmet laws that we have here in Colorado. I also ride a Harley, and I do wear a helmet. Not because I have to, because it's the right thing to do, in my opinion. So, I want to talk to you about today is a little two inch wide piece of knit nylon strap. I am here today because of that seat belt. I do not remember how many times that truck rolled. Mile marker 298, US 25 just before the Wyoming border, March 18th. We had just had a snowstorm come through the night before. You all probably remember that. I got up in the morning, skies were clear, but they were gray and they were threatening. I headed north to work. It seemed to be okay. I looked at the road, and I was deceived. You could see the pavement. You could see it perfectly. People were slowing down. I was slowing down. I got to a point right before 298, about 297. Semi-trailer in the right-hand lane. Now, I've driven those trucks. I did that for four months. I've got quite a few miles under my belt driving a semi. I saw that truck and that truck was doing 40. Now I had already slowed down from 75 to about 65. I looked at that truck. There were two cars in front of it. I thought to myself, all right, if I just ease it up just a little bit and ease myself around that truck, I'm going to be fine got in the left-hand lane, and I came around that corner, it's just a slight corner, got to the <coughs> overpass, and a gust of wind, a mini zephyr, if you will, came through, took the rear end of my pickup truck and spun me darn near 90 degrees to the pavement. I found myself looking at the median. Now, I don't remember what happened next. Maybe that's a good thing. But when I came around, I was looking at the world like this, wondering what had happened. And there's a song about something warming, warm running into your eyes. I had it. I had a heck of a bash on top of my head. I've got a gash that's healing, thank goodness, about an inch and a half long on the right side of my head. And I was dazed. <coughs> the front wheel windshield, which I had just replaced two weeks before, was completely shattered. The left side of my truck facing the sky. The windows were gone. My roof was caved in. And the first thing I saw was a man coming to me and said, do you remember who you are? Do you remember where you are? Do you know where you're going? Fortunately for me, 
I could respond to these questions. I told him, yes, I'm Bob Herzog. I live in Fort Collins. I'm heading up to my office in Cheyenne. He says, are you all right? I said, well, other than the fact that I'm hanging sideways in my truck, yes, I think I'm okay. <laughs> this man <coughs> was talking to me through a hole in the windshield. He said, wait a minute. He says, just hang hold tight. He said, I'll be right back. I'm going to get some gloves. While he was gone, I reached down and finally did find the button on my seatbelt. I dropped down into the passenger side. I was literally sitting on the door. The man came back, proceeded to rip out the windshield on halfway, and helped me out of the truck. I scooted myself forward. I at least had enough wherewithal to get myself out. Just at that moment, the ambulance rolled up. Two of them grabbed my armpits and helped me walk to the ambulance. Seven units of morphine later, plus some anti-nausea drugs, I arrived at the medical center in Cheyenne. I went through its examination. CT scan, and amazingly, I was released at 11.30, <coughs> sent home. I had a goose egg on the right side of my head about the size of a potato, and about that tall. The only thing I truly believe that saved my life was that little tiny piece of two-inch knit nylon strap. I urge you, I beg you, please wear your seat belts. I am living proof that they work, regardless of what anyone else says to you, tries to convince you of. I'm convinced they do save lives.